Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I'm going to answer some comments and questions that you guys dropped on the channel over the last few days while I was away camping with family. And this is going to be on three different videos that I've done recently. So these are all kind of recent comments. I hope you're interested. I hope you'll stick around and stay tuned. Have an amazing day. God bless. Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to get into some questions from the community. These are comments and questions that were dropped on my channel by a variety of users. And I'm just going to speak to some of the ones that grabbed my attention. Uh, some of them will be kind of duplicates. We'll just skip over those, but we'll go through and we'll try and grab some stuff with the meat on the bones and we'll get through it together. Thank you so much for dropping comments on this channel, guys, if you do, and if you leave your IGN, and if I answer that question, I will send you a little thank you afterwards. Okay, let's get into it. So I got, just got back from camping. I was away for five days camping with family. It was amazing. Thanks for you guys uh, commenting, asking how it was going and, and, and just supporting me getting some time away. Appreciate that. And I've been back for a few hours. I've been just kind of, first of all, unwinding, unpacking, cleaning up, and then played a little Starcraft too, just for a little bit of like uh, rest and relaxation. But now thinking, thinking everything Splinter Lines here, trying to like get into it and, and prepare a video here for this afternoon. This will be out on August 12th and I am going live tonight for Splinter Lines TV. So that'll be that as well. So a lot more of me this afternoon um, on August 12th. So first off, um, I had several videos out while I was away. Some of them were walks. Some of them were me hanging out near the lake. This one here, let's talk SPS. This was my attempt to provide a really detailed explanation why SPS is super important right now. If you haven't watched that video, I definitely think you should. That's my best attempt to really clearly articulate why SPS is a deeply meaningful and powerful investment at this moment in particular. I think that's about the best argument I can generate. If there are things I'm missing, I would love to see them. Um, I just saw Dr. Regina, Dr. Regina, I'm gonna say, um, my favorite video yet thank you for the useful content especially the contemplative presence today appreciate that man um a lot more feedback on this one uh talking about pack openings in general and where is that is that a part of a is that like a collectible card game thing or is that some sort of some sort of you know nefarious kind of addiction thing and um that video got demonetized because that word apparently is a hot button word. You're not, I guess YouTube doesn't like that word. Um, so I'm not going to say it here, but um, I don't actually, I think if you watch the video, I don't believe that. I think this is just a collectible card game. And I think these are assets that you're investing in. I think this is more like, you know, uh, investing than anything else. Uh, but it seems like a lot of you guys are on both sides of the fence of that. So I saw people saying, Real definitive buying assets is, is not, and um, it's just clearly like just this is like a matter of fact statement by from Supercore TV. Ryan 600 says, um, this is this is totally different because this is this, this is like buying assets as opposed to a statistically disadvantaged uh risk with a with the house. This was a good um, comment by Hyperion Sama. This is what I think. I grew up playing TCGs, which is um, trading card games, such as Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic the Gathering and a few others. And I don't like thinking, thinking of it in that way. The reason I bring that up is because pack openings in Splinterlands uh, as a card game, if we compare the, each NFT to a card, I, which I do, um, then he says, one, if we have fun, that's what matters. Uh, making money is second or third if we consider community more important than monetary factors if if people only mostly focus on the monetary aspect of it then it could definitely be a form of you know uh let's say risk risky behavior but the game itself is not and neither are the pack openings yeah this is this is my sentiment now anything can be and i think i kind of touched on this i said something like like we could take anything too far you know, you could be you could be investing in RSPs, which is traditionally like a really secure and safe form of investment for like decades into your future. It's not even a short term investment. It's like a long, long, long term investment. And you could do that in a way that was unhealthy. Like if you put too much money into your investment portfolio and you didn't leave enough for your rent or, or you know, to 
uh, provide nutrition for your family. Um, I would say that that's detrimental. That's 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 a sort of um, that's a sort of investment plan that I would strongly say like think that through. And and I think you can go into a bad place with Splinterlands also, or Yu-Gi-Oh cards, or you know uh, traditional video games. Um, and there's a great um, there's one more comment I'll read maybe. Uh, I think I just want to find it. Ivan's just glad we're, we're talking about it. But there was a comment from ah from Cameron. He says, I'm not sure uh, if you're making a comment in jest or if you're actually serious. Do you have any? He, he's asking about kids. Of, yes, I do have kids. I got eight and six year old. Um, and my eight year old starting to get into the gaming age where she wants to start buying skins for her characters. And, and that's Cameron's point. He gets into he has a 16 year old and, and most of the popular games are free, quote unquote free. But then there's all kinds of in-game purchases and he says they will routinely sink two to five hundred dollars in a game that doesn't give them anything in return and and then he compares that to well he goes on to say that he did that also with some some other games but this is very different it's investing in a project that, that happens to be enjoyable and that provides me property and actual value that's where i would that's my core sentiment but the conversation is worth having because people believe the negative comment um, that was raised. Like there's a ton of people saying when I had opened those packs, it's just, it's nothing but risky business and just the you know, risk taking and, you know, scratch and win type stuff. And I, I totally disagree. Um, uh, but okay. I don't totally disagree because I, I mostly disagree. And the nuance comes into the fact that it's, it's possible to go too far with that sort of thing. It was a great conversation to have. I'm glad we talked about it. Obviously, a lot of people have strong feelings. Kendall Kessler says on the video for Ninja Nerf, he goes, "We were in this video, we were talking about how it seems from a few people's perspective that the rewards in Splinterlands have gone down dramatically recently. And I think that I've noticed that also. And <clears throat> it strikes, it struck me in the conversation while I was just kind of responding to the question in that video. I was re I remembered that merits had come to the table and merits were were now in each one of our merits are now potentially in each one of our loot chests and so that changes the dynamics of what can be paid to you when you open a loot chest and so I dropped a comment in the video said if you guys know what the new div division of rewards is now that merits are let me know and somebody shared this with me actually several people shared it so I posted on Twitter but this is the division now it's 33% chance for DEC, 23% chance for reward cards. That's a 10% reduction, and that's where the new 10% for merits came from. So potions is still a high chance, packs are still, you know, the same percentage drop. The only difference is that 10% is now going to merits and 23% to reward cards. So this is this is this is in a sense a ninja, ninja nerf, but ninja nerf kind of implies they did it without any sort of declaration of that fact and they did absolutely tell us that this was happening they, they said it in the when they when they when they said they were adding merits and they announced that and that obviously takes up some proportion of the potential reward so i wouldn't exactly i don't truly believe it was quote unquote a ninja nerf but i do believe that it is an it represents a noticeable change in the payouts we're receiving and i think that's why both myself and you guys have noticed hey man like why am i getting so few cards well 10 percent difference is a huge difference it was going from a 33 percent chance of each loot chest being a card down to 23 percent chance and if you're getting five chests a day or 10 chests a day that 10 percent significant that's potentially you know one or two extra cards a day that you're not getting so merits might be great and i actually like receiving merits but um that's a significant change in our reward payout so i'm glad we i'm glad we did that video i'm glad uh, somebody was able to share this this information with me and uh, Kendall definitely agrees. He says they have completely lowered the payouts 100%. I noticed it right away. Now, I don't think that that's accurate, but there's a big change in the sense of what we just described. Mm, let's try and find some thumbnails that are... Okay, so this is from a conversation. Actually, um, I called the video, Sometimes it's better to take the loss. And this is a response to, to Tales from the Cryptmancer who who had left a really thoughtful comment on one of my other videos. And he said something like, I'm going to try and remember it off the top of my head, something like, um, 
Okay, so my, my original video said something like if I had an Alric Stormcloak, I would sell him and I'd buy a new modern water summoner. The price differential is so significant that it would allow you to either pocket money, roughly five, six hundred bucks US if you had a max Alric versus a max Kelly Friendle. They're both gonna be rare summoners that are gonna unlock the same sort of monsters, letting you play at a competitive level at the highest level with your blue team. And you're gonna have six hundred dollars to either pocket or to reinvest on in strengthening the rest of your deck. Maybe your water team needs your monsters need some improvement. Maybe the rest of your summoners need some improvement. Maybe other holes in your deck need to be kind of tweaked or improved. Six hundred dollars could go a long way towards improving that. And so, my view is, if you had an Alaric at this moment, while it's super still desirable, and while Kelia is really inexpensive, that would be a trade I would do. I talked also in that video about how I might do the same with like a Mylor because Mylor is so desirable. His his value compared to some of the other green summoners is really, really low. For instance, Obsidian. That trade would put money in your pocket or allow you to build out the rest of your deck. And Hales put a, a, left a really thoughtful comment that uh, I disagreed with in some sense. And he said, he said, look, you know, some of the viewers will have bought that Alric in 2021 when it was much, much higher, perhaps double its current value. And so if they sell it now, they turn a paper loss into a realized loss. And that's true in a sense, but the question isn't just, did you lose money on that trade? Always to go a step further and say to yourself, uh, is, 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 I guess, registering that loss is quote unquote, taking the L going to now introduce put money in your pocket in a moment when you could utilize that in a bigger way because that's 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 always a possibility to, uh, a year ago two grand would have bought you a, a capped out alaric today two grand will buy you so much more and so my point was you know just because it's a lot quote unquote a loss doesn't mean it's it's not a great trade it doesn't really matter what the paper loss is on that sale so long as you reinvest into more assets within Splinterlands that could theoretically appreciate wildly. And I think whether you got Kelly or Friendel or, you know, many of the new um, modern summoners, which are going to be really inexpensive, you're going to be able to add power to your deck. You're going to be able to add diversity. You're going to add depth and improve holes, making you win more and extract more rewards so i'd say that's worth it now some of the comments um this is interesting or sander said a piece is missing here if you have if you have a general market rise if we have a general market rise in prices of the untamed summoners uh the untamed summoners will rise faster as they are really scarce so i guess he's talking maybe about mylor because mylor is untamed i believe no he's dice um they will rise faster than Chaos Legion because we have so many unopened packs of Chaos Legion after the sale, and it will be so long before the that overhang effect of for Chaos Legion cards goes away. I can be I can't be so certain that the next bull run, uh, the next bull Chaos Legion summoners in the next bull run, Chaos Legion summoners will rise more than untamed because of supply. So he's he's trying to articulate that I didn't really talk about the untamed summoners as um let's quickly go over to the marketplace go buy summoners so we talked about betas and you know getting rid of like an alric for instance and then we talked about buying into chaos legion and getting like a kelly or but he's saying look what if what about the untamed ones and coming in getting for instance a bordis but what's a, a max level bordis cost a max bordis cost 300 so there, that is pretty. That's interesting. I'll, I'll grant you that. Um, versus the Kelly or Friendle, uh, which is going to cost you roughly three hundred bucks. No, uh, yeah, roughly three hundred bucks because these two wouldn't be quite max level. So you're talking pretty close to three hundred. So yeah, I mean that's interesting. I would. He's that's a strong point. It's a very strong untamed summoners. All things considered equal, I would argue Untamed Summoners have the opportunity to appreciate more rapidly than their Chaos Legion brothers because there's one-tenth as many Untamed as there are Chaos Legion. And the idea that the Chaos Legion packs are going to take time to be opened and like not just sold from the marketplace, but then opened 
True, those are really great points. The only pushback I can leave, and I need to leave this comment in response, is that Bordis is nowhere near as good as Kelly Prendel. Nowhere near. They're not even in the same league. They're, they're totally... Kelly Prendel is actually quite good, and Bordis is really mediocre. Um, and I, you know, I have my reasons thinking that. I mean, but the data would just show that. So let's just quickly look at Summoner Lab data, and let's just see. We'll go Rare Summoners... We'll go water specifically. We get a 50, 50 at the diamond league or better. We get 56% win rate with Kelia. We get a 42% with Alric. Now this is probably, look at, that's a, that's a reasonable amount of battles for that. That data is relatively accurate. And in, in large part, you'll notice like, why is it weak? It's weak against triage and strengthen. It's weak against magic reflect, magic reflect. And, and Amplify, for real. Like, Amplify is a new thing that's far more impactful. And so these things are... are, are and then Void is obviously a, um, a thing that can help, can hinder Alric um, and Silence, of course, too. So um, Alric isn't what he used to be, and yet his price tag is relatively still very high. So the question is, could you reinvest in, like, a Bordis or a Kelia? Sure. Bordis is not a bad thought, and what he said there about the untamed cards and why they might appreciate is thoughtful and 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 should be considered. But this card's just not good. It's just, this is a counterplay. This card this this card will work in the in the most fundamental way when you can predict that your mo that your opponent is a magic going to drop magic on you. If you can't predict that, then this card is just kind of you might as well not have an ability. Um, and so. I would argue Bordis is objectively worse than Kelly Frendel. Uh, Kelly Frendel has 134 battles with 56 win rate. That's a great win rate with a decent amount of data. This is a strong card. Um, and so it's not just a cheap card, it's a strong card. Bordis is cheap. Uh, Alric is not a bad card. This I do agree, think it's, you know, has it still has its niche, but when you compare that price differential between it and Frendel, I think that's where the conversation really gets interesting. Bordis is worth thinking about too, um, for the reasons he said, but I would say I would still prefer a Frendel for the same price because of the how, how much stronger it is, in my opinion. That speed is so powerful. So let's try and see if there's one or two more comments, but then I'm going to go Yannick. Oh, I haven't heard from Yannick in a while. Hey, Dwayne, Yannick here. Um, I actually think that Hale's comment is very dangerous. In a, I'm in crypto for a long time, or long enough to understand that being able to sell is much more valuable and rarely seen skill than the, in this marketplace than being diamond-handed. Uh, yeah, I mean, I understand where you're where you're coming from there, um, Yannick. Like he's he's trying to he's trying to he's trying to say that we need to be cognizant of the fact that when value, when card, certain cards appreciate significantly, we should always be willing to sell that card. We should never, and hopefully take some money off the table so that you can uh, you can actually say to yourself, this is changing my real world life. I've said to you in many, many videos, I think Splinterlands is gonna, ha has already and will change my life. And I think it might financially retire me. And I think that possibility exists for you too. Part of getting there is going to be recognizing and and I guess um, wrestling with the the reality that when the number gets significant, you sell it. If you get a card that's worth four grand, sell it. If you paid two hundred dollars for that card, that's a huge profit. Realize that profit, sell it, and do something with it for your own sake. So. And then maybe at times you're going to sell and you're going to reinvest in other assets within the game. I do that mostly, I would say. But Yannick's just trying to say, don't always look to the future and be quote unquote diamond hands. Um, think about the present and, and utilize that value when you have opportunities to do so. And that's one way you're going to be here in five years, in 10 years, not just in you know a few months. But Tails is a smart guy. He knows that too. Um, but still, great comment, Yannick. Thank you, my dude. And I'll get read... Two more because I reckon I, Days is one of the boys and then Yellow uh, is here all the time. So we'll read those two and we'll call it. Days said on that same video, sell Alrec, swap the DC for SPS, wait for Rift Watchers, wipes SPS supply and SPS pumps theoretically, uh, and then buy maxed Alrec and, Ken and Kelia. I like that, man. That's that. I, I actually, I like the confidence. This is kind of the opposite of 
This is the second part of the picture that Yannick just said, you want to be able to sell to kind of liquidate. And I said, yeah, but sometimes you want to sell to reinvest. What Days is saying is what I would think to do in a, in a moment like that. In fact, it's what I largely did. I put all of my, I sold my kitty, I put it into SPS. I'm sitting on that SPS. If SPS goes to 15 cents, I doubled that, that sale. And then I will cash out that value. I'm using it to go to Vegas. I, pick, I booked my, my trip, my hotel. Can't wait. And, uh, and then absolutely I'll buy, I'll buy, maybe I'll buy a kitty back. Who knows? And then yellow goes, yellow goes, I knew by the title, it would be a response to tales. Yes, true. And then again, sometimes it is better to just hodl. This is true. It's, you know, these conversations are filled with nuance guys. And I hope you hear that. And tales, if you're watching this video and the previous, I hope you hear that. I respect the nuance of the conversation. It's not hey tails is wrong Dwayne's right it's like it's actually well in the right context he's 100 percent right and, and in 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 a different context um selling is right so i think i made a good point why you would want to consider selling such an asset and you know but his his approach would be in some sense prudent you wouldn't be you know um dealing with market fees you wouldn't be like um you know, maybe you, you it will appreciate more rapidly than than Akelia. So it's it's always you want to think these things through and you don't want to be tied down to one or committed to one answer. You want to think both pros and cons of either situation and, and then make your call. Especially if all the cards you got are brand new ones. I have not appreciated that have not appreciated one bit. Hodl, I say. So yellow says hodl. I mean, just hodl on the on the alrec for instance if it's if it's um if you've had it and it's gone from 2000 to 900 i get it i i've been through crypto when it so bitcoin was at three thousand dollars american went to went to twenty thousand american my assets went soaring and then i watched it all crumble down and when it all crumbled down i could have said oh, i'm just gonna hold it and then in four years, I'll, it'll it'll grow into something new. But I, instead, I, I, tr I made a decision to be active, and per, um, and to make intentional investments that would hopefully grow faster than just passively sitting back and waiting. And what that entailed was moving into Splinterlands in a big way, which was then called Steam Monsters. And so, you know, it worked out for me. It doesn't mean it's necessarily going to work out for you. But I would argue it's always about being thoughtful about how you reinvest every day thinking is there a new move that i could make that would move me that would stretch what i'm doing and if the the answer might most of the days be no but some days the answer will be yes and maybe it's selling a kitty and maybe it's selling an hour or maybe it's um who knows what but um it's just really important to be thoughtful about this stuff and not be tied down to well i bought the alrec and now i just need to sit and wait till it's worth on paper more than i paid for it that that's not you know that's not a bal a well balanced thoughtful response in my opinion it's more there's more to it there's more nuance to that conversation and i'm gonna leave it there guys uh thanks for everything guys while i was away you guys uh, tons of comments still tons of views appreciate it and i am hanging out tonight on splinterlands tv on twitch so come hang out 9 p.m to 11 p.m pacific standard time every friday night okay bye for now have an amazing day